But Theo, I already use GraphQL. Why would I use TRPC? Let's chat. <laughs> so, TRPC is the easiest way to expose a function on your back end to your front end. Sadly, you have to have TypeScript on both the back end and the front end for that to work. Thankfully, a lot of people have that already. So if I am building a backend, be it Node.js, Express, Deno even, I think there's a Deno binding, might not sure about that, fact check that later. TRPC is a way to describe the things the backend can do and then call them remotely. That's what the RPC stands for, Remote Procedure Call. It allows you to remotely call that backend code from the front end. What TRPC is not is a schema. It is not a thing. TRPC is a, a method. It's a, a protocol for exposing your backend functions to your front end. GraphQL is a schema and a language designed for you to, in detail, describe everything your backend can do and the shape of that data as a graph. So with GraphQL, you might have a, a user resolver that has a friends resolver that has an array of users that are your friends, but that type of like nested recurse, like somewhat recursive structure is very common in GraphQL. It's by design kind of what it was made to do. And if your client or server won't be running TypeScript for some reason, like you have a Flutter or Kotlin dev that refuses to leave behind their dated ways, or you have backend developers that insist on still using Golang or Python, or maybe you have one of those rare use cases where your TypeScript really is too slow for your backend and you do need to use other things. Or this is kind of common and I, I get why it happens still. Your backend team and your frontend team don't talk or get along. GraphQL is a method of communication between those teams and those like owners. So your backend team and your frontend team might not have a way of communicating right now. And if they do, it might not be very fast. GraphQL is like a contract that those two teams write up, agree on, and then they go fuck off and do their own thing. And as long as both are honoring their side of that contract, when they come back together and plug it in, it all works. The goal of GraphQL is kind of to like, let you cut a hard line at the back end and the front end and know that they'll always staple back together. TRPC is bringing them closer together. So if your goal is to separate your backend and front end way further because you're, you have backend developers who want to write backend code and you have front end developers who want to write front end code and they don't get along, GraphQL is a great solution. If you have an architecture at your company or your team where your backend developers are focused on like scaling their side and they want a single focused schema to honor, GraphQL makes a ton of sense for that too. For external consumers, I found GraphQL to be a little uh, rough, generally speaking, but for internal consumption for a company like at Twitch, we used GraphQL and I think it worked really well for our use case there because we had a team of GraphQL experts that led the implementation of the GraphQL edge and built a very strict schema of what we expect that to return. And whenever somebody wanted to make a schema change, they would thoroughly review it, make suggestions and make sure that the design and architecture of our backend query system was good. And as a method to communicate about those things, GraphQL worked phenomenally well. I don't have the guy who created the GraphQL Golang package working with me anymore. I love you, Tony, and you made it possible for Twitch to do GraphQL as well as it did. But most companies don't have a GraphQL god to make sure they do it right. They're adopting it because they looked at companies who invented GraphQL or have the GraphQL inventors working for them, like the Facebooks and the Netflixes and the Twitches of the world. And seeing that they use GraphQL, saying, oh, they use it. We should too. It works for them. It has to work for us. But man, it is very easy to build hell, <laughs> absolute hell in GraphQL. And I've seen that a lot. Like even the, the GitHub GraphQL API is a shit show, absolute tragedy. And that's, it's not even like, common is feels the wrong word it's it's often that i see that when i see especially public graphql apis it's it's rest with extra steps and that's i think how i would define the difference here graphql is rest with extra steps because for an architecture reason a team reason a design reason or for for good reason you want to add things on top of rest to make it more complex but stricter and more powerful and dynamic trpc is the opposite it's 
stripping down rest and getting rid of a lot of the, the weight and the bullshit. So you have the simplest possible way to call your back end on your front end safely. I hope that clarifies. It's almost like they're, they're, it's not like you pick between TRPC or GraphQL. It's you start with rest and you decide at that point, hey, do I have clients and servers that need other languages? OK, we, we stay on rest. If you don't, but you have any type group on the client and the server, maybe move into TRPC land. But if you do and those clients are getting more complex, the systems for defining that backend is getting more intricate and you realize that rest isn't cutting it because you have like nested referential recursive graph type stuff. Or you want a schema, as I mentioned before, to make it easy to communicate between the back end team implementing that service and the front end team or client team or TV app team or game dev team that consumes it. GraphQL can be a really good method to define and agree on that schema. But as I pointed out, it is an investment in much more heavily defining everything <laughs> rather than in TRPC, which is an investment in simplifying everything. I saw somebody on YouTube chat actually ask a pretty fun question of, uh, I wonder if one day we can use TRPC or an equivalent for a non TypeScripty front end client. And that is a phenomenal thought because uh, I wonder if this will have a Google hit. Somebody got a lot of progress in this and I want to find the, the link. Here we are, TRPC open API. So this has a couple devs working on it right now. I don't think Alex is particularly involved yet. He's just like answering questions, but he is very excited about this. Did not have my screen share, my bad. So. TRPC Open API is a new package that generates a Swagger Open API doc and endpoint for your TRPC. So if you build a TRPC router and you want the type defs and the more traditional REST experience of Swagger, you can now generate that from your TRPC directly. So I don't know how, how good of a state this is in or how consumable this will be, but there is definitely, definitely a future where you write your TRPC and an open API comes out. Do you generally have to use a mono repo for TRPC? That is another really fantastic point. Yes. Generally, it is a lot easier to use a uh, mono repo with TRPC. The reason for that is because TRPC's type definitions come from the type script code itself. Whereas with something like GraphQL, you have to generate a schema. You have to run code that generates this thing, this entity, the GraphQL schema that is then given a version number and distributed and different things can, can grab that GraphQL schema. So like when I was developing at Twitch, one of the commands you had to run was yarn GQL. And what that command would do is it would call the public GraphQL endpoint and pull down the most recent GraphQL schema and then throw errors as it generates the type definitions based on what you're querying within the app from there. The problem with that is if you have an old commit or an old like version of the code on your machine and you run that command, it's not smart enough to fetch the old version of the GraphQL run against the old backend. This is generally the case with like not using a mono repo though. The benefit of TRPC kind of forcing your hand that way is at any point in your package history, you have, or at any point in like your Git history, as long as it passed build, then your backend definition and your front end consuming it should match ideally and it, it, there's a whole class of problems that you're constantly working around in things like graphql or even like traditional like rest and swagger type stuff where you're worried about versions all the time a lot of like the way i build things is trying to avoid thinking about versions as much as possible and just everybody's always on the latest thing even with mobile i'm actually a little harder stanced on this with mobile it's one of the reasons i'm so pro react native and versus things like flutter like even if Flutter was technically incredible, there's no way to ship an update to your Flutter app without sending it through the app store and Google or Apple approving it. So if there's a small bug or a hiccup, you have to go through all that. And if a user isn't on the latest version, they can keep using the old one. They don't have to, they don't have to update the app. They can stick around on an old version of the app forever. With Expo, for, with React Native, 
the JavaScript bundle that controls most of the app is externally hosted, and I can npx expo push in my terminal, and whatever I have running there gets pushed up as the new bundle for all of my users to download, and I can even write code that checks for that update whenever they navigate, sees if they're on the latest version or not, and resets the app if they're not with the fresh bundle, can even restore the position they are in the app. So I'm able to, with what looks like a quick flicker to the user, if at all, entirely update the layer that is doing the fetching from TRPC or doing the like rendering of the UI, everything but the native layer, I can hot swap by changing out that JavaScript bundle. And I never have to worry about versioning as a result because everything's always on the latest version. What protocol does TRPC use? It's HTTP, nothing special there. That is correct, Green Scars. Fantastic instinct there. All, or all TRPC is, is a syntax for having one endpoint call the right function based on the like properties you pass and call with. Hey, did you know that over half my viewers haven't subscribed yet? That's insane. Y'all just click these videos and listen to me shout and hope that the algorithm is going to show you the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, maybe even the bell next to it so that you know when I'm posting videos. Also, if you didn't know this, almost all of my content is live streamed on Twitch while I'm making it. Everything on the YouTube is cuts, clips, whatever, from my Twitch show. So if you're not already watching, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Theo, where I'm live every Wednesday around 2 or 3 p.m. And I go live on Fridays pretty often as well. Thank you again for watching this video. Really excited. Thank you.